Hi there, I'm Jennifer Angel. This is my horoscope weekly report for December the 15th. So I'm going to cover an overview first and then a quick snapshot for each sign. So there's quite a lot happening this week. First of all, on the 15th, so right on the Monday, we have the Uranus Pluto square. So this is six out of seven of these squares. The last one is going to be next March. Um, on the 16th or 17th of, of March. So we'll come to a conclusion. So this has been a series of squares during this period over a three year uh, period. So it can be a stressful time full of uh, tension and change. I mean, Uranus is the planet of, of sudden changes, also originality and creativity. Uh, it's sitting there in the sign of um, Aries, so it can be a little bit sort of rash uh, with its changes. And it's slow moving planet, so it's been there for a while, it's going to be there for a while. And uh, Pluto is in the sign of Capricorn. Now, Pluto is a very transformational uh, energy, and it really sort of helps you get down and sort of deal with psychological issues or deep, dark sort of issues that really you keep pushing down because maybe they're just too hurtful to uh, deal with. And I always think that there's times and places where you're ready to deal with things and other times when perhaps you've got too much else going on in your life that it's it's just too overwhelming to deal with things. So this is one of those trigger times where you can deal with stuff if you're in the position to do so. And if you are, it's a good idea to do so because if you've got some unsettled business which you keep pushing down, then chances are you're going to keep attracting situations that are going to trigger it so you can come up, you can look at it, feel it, deal with it and release it. Okay. Sounds easy when you say it like that, but you know, it, it takes work. I mean, this whole living thing on this planet Earth does take a little bit of work. I think we've sort of all figured that out for, for now. Um, all right, so um, communication planet Mercury is going to make a move this week as well, and it's going to move into the sign of Capricorn. So um, very logical thinking, very analytical thinking in Capricorn, uh, very much to do with common sense as well. So if you need to deal something or get something sorted out, then um, you want to sort of check in with your intuition, but Capricorn's going to allow you to, you know, with Mercury and Capricorn, it's going to allow you to think about it on a reality. What's the reality of the situation, okay, and really get down to business with it. Um, then we also have uh, Mercury in a sextile with um, Neptune. So very good for writing, very good for arts. It's a very imaginative placement and creativity can be spiked uh, this week. And uh, Venus square... Uh, Uranus can set up a little bit of tension in relationships, so watch that. You want to make sure that your, um, you know, a, a tense tenseness or you know maybe a, aggression is directed at the right person because sometimes what can happen is when we don't say our truth and say how we feel as things are happening in our life then you get that straw broke the camel's back syndrome okay and one last thing happens and it gets all your rage it sort of comes out the wrong way and and uh, the situational person that it's coming out in gets everything, all that frustration that's built up. And sometimes the thing that you're going off about or reacting to doesn't really warrant the full reaction. So you want to be a little bit careful about that this week. Um, there's a conjunction with the Venus and Pluto where they're just 
conjoined together they are a very passionate uh, connection there's a terrific for love terrific for sex drive um and you know it's a very seductive it's almost like you know with the venus square uranus and the venus can conjunct Pluto so it's sort of like a make it and break up of the stage for relationships okay so it's like but you know what they say the best part about breaking up is the making up so you know that's uh, certainly got that sort of vibration about it and then um, just to finish off I'm going to finish off with Mars in a sextile with Uranus there's a lot of activity around Uranus this week so let's not forget Uranus is it's like sudden change and Mars also is about sudden changes but this is occurring later in the week so it's also a sextile as like opportunities can come through okay um, but it's a very determination and strong will uh, powerful you want to be careful that you're not putting your um, will you know make sure where you're putting your will it's assertiveness rather than aggression because Mars has two as everything there's a positive and negative okay so there's two sides to Mars it's like a assertive go get a trailblazer energy or you know it can be aggressive and angry so um, you want to be a little you know careful about about that as well there is a new moon coming up next week on the monday so it's like a, a lot of this uh disruptive activity is going on through the week it allows you to clear energy so you can get ready for a new start next week okay so it's all good all right let's have a look at each sign now um, all right, Aries. Well, Aries, of course, you have um, Uranus in your sign. All right, so you know you've got all the. I do encourage everybody to listen through to the uh, the overview because as we go forward, I'm going to make just a snapshot. As you know, uh, um, I'm going to make just like a snapshot of what's happening in each star sign so you want to go back and, and to make sure you listen to the overview but you do have uranus in your sign there are a number of uh, aspects with with uranus can be quite confronting particularly with work and particularly with relationships okay so stand in your power sometimes that these you know little sort of triggers will just help you make up your mind what's important to you okay and certainly you can that can happen this week there's an opportunity to work with somebody towards the end of the week all right and um next week there will be further opportunities in your career so it's pretty well all about career at the moment all right not to say that there's no love Aries but you know we're leading up to the end of the year it's a good time to put your focus on business all right okay so uh, Taurus um, we've got Uranus right in the sign before you uh, Taurus and we do have a square with Uranus and Venus on the 20th which is next weekend and we're leading up to that and Venus of course your ruling planet anything that happens with Venus is you know very important to you has a great influence on you and Venus is going to be sitting in your solar ninth house is also a conjunction so where Venus and Pluto are conjoined at that same degree uh, so there's a couple of things here um, what goes on here it, on one sense it can just highlight to you what you could or should be doing or options and then it's like once you make up your mind it's almost like you're going to have to make it a quick decision on something now there's a decision here you have an opportunity uh, to either be reactive or change your attitude and try to see someone else's side of something so if you can see someone else's side then the Pluto conjunct Venus is is very powerful passionate seductive okay and it, it can really bring you in line with your true wants needs desires in life and help you to walk that 
path okay so as always there's choices to make all right it's up to you which way you go all right let's go through and have a look at Gemini so uh, Gemini right opposite you in your area of relationships we have um, Mercury, your ruling planet, Mercury is going to make a move this uh, week and move in on the 17th, so midweek into the next sign. So um, communication is very much important in your life. You're a great communicator. You're never short of uh, words or what to say. When it moves into your solar eighth house, this can bring together opportunities, particularly as there's a new moon in this area next week opportunities to work with people that can uh, perhaps be financially beneficial so you want to keep the um, airwaves open and keep the communication doors open then but you may have to be the person that starts the communication off and make sure that you follow up I mean you can start something and if you don't follow up then you know maybe it's not going to go anywhere but if you do there's a good chance that it can lead to somewhere great um, friends can show their true colors this week as well so you know you may feel that you're leading up to the end of this year uh, it's a time where you can really do a little bit of spring cleaning in your life so you know don't be surprised if you start to close off and walk away from some people simply because you're just traveling in different directions firstly secondly uh, you know maybe someone is going to show their true colors and you think that's not really where you are anymore it's not your vibration it's not who you're resonating with and you're moving on in a different direction and you want to leave that behind okay fine it's all all well and good um, there is also a very nice connection between uh, Neptune in your area of business very creative um, aspect for you between Neptune and Mercury so good to get any writing publishing anything that uh, is imaginative or creative uh, done as well uh, is it going to come with certain frustrations probably there's a lot of uh, different things happening in this week's chart but um, if you follow through as I said then it's it can all work out right for you okay all right cancer so right opposite to cancer in your area of relationships there's a new moon coming up in this area next week so what happens this week is, is can clear out the energy refresh the energy for you so you can get rid of some old baggage and and be ready to open the door to attract the type of relationship situation into your life that you desire or if you're in a relationship it's a time where you can you know really sort of deal with some cracks that have developed okay now can you can you renew it maybe maybe not um, with the Uranus Pluto square which is influencing your relationships and business then this can very well be a bit of a makeup or breakup sort of point but we do have Venus right there in your opposite sign in your relationship area with Pluto so this is very powerful as well so to me it seems like sure you could have some sort of an upset but um, as I said in the overview you know the best part of breaking up is making up so you know it can all come back together for you all right um, so be prepared for anything this week Uranus there are a number of aspects of Uranus and Uranus if nothing else is the planet of sudden change okay all right so Leo there's Mars sitting right opposite your sign um, Leo at the end of the week we've got that very um, advantageous productive aspect with Mars and Uranus and an opportunity 
that's coming together there. Uh, you could be possibly traveling or dealing with foreign affairs and uh, having a, a certainly communication on a, on a business level. Uh, we have that Pluto Uranus square early in the week, so things may not all go as you plan or expect, but what comes out of it can clear the way for something better to take place. Okay, so don't make too many judgments straight away. Wait to see how everything falls into place before you start making assumptions. Okay, um, all right, Virgo. Right opposite you, Virgo, with uh, Neptune, um, there's your ruling planet, which is Mercury, is in a sextile towards the end of the week on the weekend with uh, Mercury. Now, uh, by that time, Mercury will have moved into the sign of Capricorn, which for you is your solar fifth health an area where love affairs can start. So this is a very sort of romantic, imaginative, uh, fun, uh, you know, aspect. So it's certainly a, communi a communicative, but, um, you know, lighthearted. Now, of course, while that's lighthearted, we have at the start of the week with Pluto and uh, Uranus in a square. Um, plus a Venus and Pluto conjunct, so all in this fifth house area of yours. Um, so certainly get to get getting together with groups of people and uh, working as a team and working as a team member is is um, advisable this week and you don't have any problems about that Virgo I mean you're certainly able to you know capable of doing your own thing and thinking on your own but really the you know the most joy and satisfaction that you get is to be able to work with a team and discuss um, discuss different things you need to be with people who uh, you can have in depth the conversations with rather than just you know frivolous encounters and that can certainly happen this week okay so that's nice uh, Libra Uranus and Pluto it's like you know square right at the start of the week this is number six out of seven in this series the last one coming up next March so we're not out of it yet but uh, it's in your family zone and your relationship zone so for some time now it seems like you've been dealing with some family issues and certainly some issues with siblings as well so it's about to come to an end it's about to be sorted out but not without your effort Okay, um, Venus and Pluto uh, together also a little later on the weekend. <coughs> Excuse me, that can uh, signify that it does come to a, a, a head and um, it can clear the air. Okay, so it's like the spark is there, it's like this trigger point pushing the button to restart. There's a whole set of spark which can be a little explosive, but once that settles down, it can be replaced with a resolution. Okay, so not the way you like to work ordinarily, but what we want here is a resolution because I do feel this has been going on for some time for you and I do feel we are getting close to that okay try not to be too reactive and try to keep it um you know on a a, a little bit logical common sense um, but of course you want to feel it because if you feel it then you can you know bring it up deal with it and clear it you know it's when you get too analytical and you keep pushing it down then that's when it's going to get stuck so there's an opportunity here to really sort of start to clear this out this week and just in time because next monday there's a new moon in your family area and that's going to give you a new a, a new start that new moon um looks like it's it's going to sort of have a karmic effect as well and really be able to sort of clear some past stuff all right so be open to that Scorpio um, all right so 
the Uranus Pluto square at the start of the week, Scorpio, is going to help you with communications and business. If it's something that you feel that you'd like to say, you haven't said, this is the week, get it off your chest, don't push it down, say how you feel, walk, in, walk your truth, and so be it, okay? What happens, what happens, is what happens. Um, there's also a, a very nice connection um, with uh, someone close towards the end of the week with Mars, your co-ruler, and uh, Uranus coming together as well. So it's an opportunity to um, either rebuild what's going on in the, uh, the first part of the week. It's almost like things need to be thrown up get sort of a little unsettled, wait till they all fall down together again and falls back into a different place and you can start uh, you can start afresh and the new moon on Monday is certainly going to help you start that afresh. So this week is really a bit of a, a leveling type of week and sorting out, you know, a little bit conf a little bit confronting and unsettling but you know, hey, that's life. Better now than a little later in the year, if you ask me. All right, so Sagittarius. Um, Mercury in your sign is going to move out midweek into the next sign. So this is your solar second house, all to do with money and possessions. Also very much to do with your overall self-worth. How worthy you feel of accepting in your life, um, you know, everything that you desire. And particularly on a monetary level that can provide you stability. Now also in this area is Pluto. A couple of things happening with Pluto this week. Um, first of all on the Monday there's the Pluto Uranus a, a square. So this is going to be in an area which can affect relationships, children, anything that you're doing with creativity, uh, project, and that's around uh, money and um, then later in the in the week <coughs> excuse me uh, we've got uh, Pluto and or yes later in the week on the 20th so at the start of the weekend we've got a conjunction between Pluto and Venus so this is um, a very powerful connection with these two and particularly being in your solar second house okay that's can really bring through some some financial uh, situations, decisions, money, perhaps somebody owes you something and that can sort of come back to um, and I want to have a look at the family area here because there's a connection, interaction between Mercury and uh, Neptune also on the 20th and Neptune sitting in your family area so I want to say to you there if there's anything to do with money and family you know get real about it you may want it to be a certain situation but the fact is it it is what it is and it's time that you see that and accept it for what it is okay so there's a lot of movement this week. There's a new start next week with the new moon in your solar second house. There's a lot of activity in this area for you, all to do with money, possession, stability. <coughs> Excuse me. You want to make sure that you feel, you know, worthy or your self-worth is intact. If there's any, don't let anybody tell you you can't do anything or you're not worthy of anything, okay? Just like get that out, block your ears and don't accept that because you've got an opportunity now to really clear some inner baggage around this area and clear it out for good and open yourself up for abundance. Okay, we like that. All right, Capricorn. <clears throat> um, all right, so we're on the six out of seven Uranus Pluto squares. And the last one will be next March, okay, which will bring everything to a conclusion, but we're getting to that point. So, of course, Pluto is in your sign, Uranus is in around your home, domestic, your family area of life. So if you um, 
<clears throat> have had some changes in this area or you're thinking about doing some changes, then guess what? This is the time where you're going to have to think about it if you haven't already because these dates that I give you is the exact degree. So, you, you know, we've got the energy leading up to it. So, you know, you certainly in my life, I've already had the, the, the home dilemma, you know. Um, so that's what I'm saying. It could have already happened. I'm hoping there's nothing else. <laughs> I'll let you know next week because, you know, if you've been watching me for a while, you'll know that I'm a Capricorn as well. Um, now, there's a Pluto uh, connection with uh, Venus. This is very nice, okay? So it's on the 20th towards the weekend. So if you're single, I'd get out and start dating Capricorn because this is like very seductive. It's powerful. It's passionate. Uh, it's sexy. Uh, you know, if you had uh, had any issues with a relationship, or tension, then it can sort of come together. This is a real makeup time, you know, a real passionate time. So, um, as always, uh, you know, there's very few things in life, I think, that are worth getting upset about, you know, really upset about. So, you know, try to look at the big picture and don't get too involved in the nitty gritty pettiness of every day, okay? And if you can do that, you can just let something go and enjoy the moment. After all, life is for living. It's, you know, got to find less sitting behind our computers, Capricorn, and more out there, more having some fun. And uh, I know that, you, that many of you know I've been evaluating, um, you know, on the videos and I'm probably going to, looks like I'll be dropping the dailies, just trying to get a little more time in my life to have a little more balance and more fun. So I hope you can do the same. Um, all right, Mars sitting in your solar second house. Um, avoid any rash decisions with money. There is a nice connection with Mars and Uranus towards the end of the week, which can bring some opportunities around to do if you're home, family, domestic scene to do with money. So uh, I hope something nice happens for us there. Um, and certainly a lot of movement. Next week we've got the new moon in our sign. So, uh, you know, any clearing and letting go of old stuff we can do now is going to open us up to that new start next next week because that's that's our annual new moon. Okay, so very sort of great positive time. All right, so Aquarius. So we've got uh, Mars still in your sign. Uh, Aquarius is a, a nice connection between Mars and Uranus towards the end of the week, at the start of the weekend, or, or on the weekend, actually, the Sunday. Um, and uh, this can bring through some opportunities, particularly around siblings or uh, with business. It can be around... Uh, a creative project that you're working on um, and it can come out of the blue because let's face it Mars and Uranus are the two planetary vibrations that things can just like change suddenly okay so you want to and of course Uranus is your ruling planet so I am just going to say expect the unexpected this week now, at the start of the week, we've got Uranus and Pluto in a square. This is six out of seven of squares in this series. It's been going over three years now. The last one is going to come up um, next um, March. And uh, that will sort of bring things full circle. And, you know, but you can still, you should be able to start to see the conclusion and how things are starting to come together. Now, for you, Pluto is in your solar 12th house. There's a lot of activity in this area of your chart this week. So it's a highly intuitive area. It's also an area which prompts you or urges you to really sort of get down and think about how you feel about things um, and bring up any old baggage. And that's what Pluto does. Pluto is a planet of transformation. So it like breaks down 
for, to build up. And certainly because Pluto is in the sign of Capricorn, the foundations that you build up again are much stronger. So in the 12th house here, it's an opportunity for you to deal with um, some old issues, maybe some karmic issues, some psychological issues, some emotional baggage, okay? And just, you know, get rid of it. Um, all right, so let's move on to Lucky Louse, and that's Pisces, and right, with your ruling planet Neptune on in your sign, there's a very nice connection or interaction between Neptune and um, Mercury this week. It's on the 20th, so it's the start of the weekend, and um, Mercury is sitting in the 11th house. In fact, there's a lot of activity in your solar 11th house, and this opens the airways for communication to... Um, just have more exchange in your life with people and more balanced or equal exchange. So it's it's it does uh, encourage you for to compromise on some levels and to give and take. And I know that may sound simple, but you know some people are better at giving and some people are better at receiving and really to keep that exchange between you and others and that balance happening then you want to get proficient at doing both okay so if you're not great at receiving then uh, during this period um, it's very likely that you'll have the opportunity to simply just say Thank you. Okay, don't miss it. Um, uh, but the eleventh house is also very much about working with people and reaching out to people. Now, there's a connection between uh, a conjunction between Venus and Pluto, and this is very powerful. And in that eleventh house, also with Venus and Pluto, there can be relationships. It can also be financial. So it's possible that there's a financial um, breakthrough or uh, something that comes unexpectedly financially can head your way this week as well so that's nice all right so thank you so much for watching i hope something great does happen for you i'm jennifer angel love and luck to you bye for now